Hey, what's going on guys? John the Video Guy here. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you Premiere Pro preferences. Now, I'm not gonna go through everything, but you know, as a video editor, I'm gonna go over the most important preferences that you guys can use for your own projects. You know, take what's valuable for you and leave the rest. So before we get started on this video, the major preference we have to change is the like button down below. Turn it from gray to blue. It really helps out my channel. And with that, let's get started. Let's dive in here. I'm gonna to go to Premiere Pro Preferences General, and we'll just work our way through down the menu. So the big thing about the general uh, options here is for the bins is the most important thing because what you can do is navigating footage in Premiere Pro can be quite tricky. And knowing these little shortcuts is really nice and you can even change these. So say if you wanna go into a bin and you double click it, it will open it into a new window, but you can also change it to open in place or open a new tab. And by adding a plus command or plus option, you can do the other two as well. So just knowing these, and you can even change them as well, is very handy when you're organizing footage and you know, you're making bins and you wanna access bins. That's really it for general. Let's go down to appearance. So the one thing in appearance is, I believe the default is, actually the default is darker. So, you know, I would suggest leaving it as darker. You know, lighter is really kind of weird looking. And just as video editors in general, you want to keep the screen darker because it just helps the video editing. And actually I read a few articles as well where you kind of want to be in a dark environment in general. It just kind of helps you get into the mood and kind of interpret the footage and craft the story correctly. You have more color accuracy, you can see the screen better in just a dark environment. So having the UI as well being dark really helps. All right, let's go down to audio. So the biggest thing in audio is there's a checkbox for play audio while scrubbing. So if you don't want that annoying <laughs> when you're scrubbing your footage, you can uncheck that and that way uh, it doesn't play the audio while you're scrubbing footage, which is very helpful. I've turned that off, so feel free to check that off. The other one is mute input during timeline recording. This is important if you are doing your own voiceover as the editor. Um, you might not run into this, but this is something I've ran into since I run a podcast. I'm usually the host and if I re-record one of my um, intros or questions, I usually have to mute because otherwise I hear myself talking over myself and it's very weird. But if you're not in this situation, then you don't have to worry about it. But this is a helpful checkbox that I've ran into. Let's go down to audio hardware. So this is an important one that you'll probably reference quite a bit using Premiere Pro. The default input and default output, you'll have to change depending on what inputs you're using, whether you're using a Mac, the, the laptop microphone, or if you have an external microphone. Currently, you can see it's not working because I don't have an external microphone plugged in. So I would change it back to MacBook Pro microphone. Click yes. And output, I still have on speakers, but like if I plugged in headphones, I would change it to headphones, uh, which isn't an option here yet because it doesn't detect headphones. And the same thing goes for the system preferences. On a Mac, it's down here. So you'd have to go and change both go into sound, speakers, or you know, headphones if you do have headphones plugged in, and same thing with input. So you can see you have to change both in the preferences and inside Premiere Pro when you switch headphones and speakers and whatnot, or microphones from internal and external microphones. So just keep that in mind, it's kind of like a two-part thing. So that's the most important thing inside audio hardware. Next, let's go to autosave. If you watched my earlier videos, I'm not a big fan about autosave, but this is where you go to adjust these settings. So if you wanna use autosave, you can check the box and it will save it every X amount of minutes. You can choose any type of uh, duration that works for you. Uh, if Premiere Pro crashes quite frequently, you can make it five, 10 minutes, you know, a little more often in the maximum project versions. This is interesting because they don't take up a lot of space. So if I were to use this, I would probably do like 9,000 or whatever the max number you can put into the boxes. So I would just max that out because they don't take up a lot of space and you know, it's better to be safe than sorry. Now, if you're curious on why I don't use autosave, honestly, I think autosave 
It's a conspiracy theory, but I believe that autosave actually causes Premiere Pro to crash more often. Ever since I turned it off, it has helped me, and honestly, Premiere Pro hasn't really crashed that often uh, compared to the times when I've been using autosave. So try it out, you know, disclaimer, turn it off at your own risk, hit Command S all the time, that's what I do, so that's my recommendation. Capture, collaboration, we don't really have to worry about. Same thing with control surface, unless you're adding some type of control or device, you don't really have to pay attention to these that much. Same thing with graphics, it's pretty standard unless you're like in a different part of the world. Uh, the next thing that's relevant is labels. If you really wanna change the colors, you can. Usually for me, I just leave them alone, so I don't really go in here and mess with the colors that much, but if you are kinda, you know, really color oriented, you have the ability to change the labels as you see fit. Next one is media. Media, I don't really change anything in here. I mean, you can if you want, but a lot of these settings I just leave alone. Uh, the next big one is media cache. And if you do have the hard drive space, you can store where to save the files. And it is recommended, I don't do this, but they have a dedicated SSD to save your media cache files. That way Premiere Pro can easily read and write really quickly from that drive and that's not bogging down your system. So if you have the budget, I recommend doing that. For me, I don't do it and it hasn't really slowed down my process that much, but you know, it is saved on my local computer hard drive and I usually actually store uh, my video files on an external hard drive. So basically I dedicate my internal computer uh, storage to uh, the cache and then my actual project files are on an extra external hard drive. So that's where you would go to change where it's located. Also, um, you'll wanna do this frequently if uh, you have do not delete cache files uh, automatically turned on is to delete them. So to delete, you just click the delete button, you click okay and it will clean the cache. I recommend doing this maybe at least once a month, but it really depends how often you use Premiere Pro. As again, you know, if you have automatically delete cache files on, you'll delete it after X amount of days. So you can set that in the menu down here. So feel free to work whatever works for you. I usually don't have clean cache on. I usually go in, I'll notice that it's starting to get slow. So I'll go in and delete the cache files. Memory is the next big one. You wanna make sure that most of the RAM is dedicated for Premiere Pro, After Effects, and all the other Adobe applications. This will increase rendering speeds and you know, you'll be able to render out uh, files a lot quicker. So dedicating as much RAM as you can to these. Uh, right now, I have to preserve three for other applications. So 29 out of my 32 gigabytes of RAM is for Premiere Pro. But on the flip side, you know, if you happen to render something and you want to work on something else, you'll notice that there is some type of lag. So, you know, you got to weigh your options here. But uh, most of the time you'll want to dedicate as much RAM to Premiere Pro as possible. Playback, I don't really change anything in here. Same with sync settings. And the next big one is timeline. Um, under video transition default duration, this is the one I change most often because if you're working on slideshows or things where you add a lot of cross dissolves and different uh, transitions, you can set the default, um, which I've changed from, I think it was 30 frames to 12 frames. So that has helped me save time other than trying to apply it and then shorten it every time. If there's some type of consistent frames uh, amount of frames that you use for transitions, you can change that here in the preferences. So it does save time if you have a set uh, amount of frames for the default transition. Same thing with audio and then still frames as well. So if you're working with a lot of still frames or slides or something, and you know that they're always gonna be like 10 seconds, eight seconds, then you can easily change that here in the Premiere Pro preferences from five to eight, or five to 10, and that way it's always gonna be that once you add it to the timeline. So it's just a good way to save some time by filling this out ahead of time and you know you become a faster editor. The other thing that I uh, turned off is at playback end, return to the beginning when restarting playback. 
So you notice like if you play the timeline and it goes to the end and you press play again, the playhead moves to the beginning of the timeline and plays. Where I don't really want to do that all the time. Say if I'm working at the end of the footage and I'm just on like the last clip and I click play, it gets to the end and I click play again and it goes to the beginning. Maybe I don't want to go back to the beginning. This is a good way to turn that off. So I've turned it off, but for you it might not be an issue. The other one also is play after rendering previews. So you notice if you add effects and different things and you want to render it out, uh, you click return or enter and it renders and at the end it usually just plays it. And, and most of the time I usually don't want to play it after I render it out. Um, or you know sometimes I'll go use a restroom and I come back and it's halfway playing it. And honestly I just uncheck that. So that's right here, play after rendering previews. If you often render things and you don't want it to play right after it finishes rendering, uh, you can uncheck it here and that way it doesn't do that. So that has helped me. And then the last one's trim. I don't really change anything here. And then to save your preferences, make sure that you click OK. If you click cancel or quit Premiere Pro, it won't save all the changes you made. So make sure you click OK and then you are done. So there you go, those are the preferences that I've made and adjusted in Premiere Pro. I hope this video has helped you if you're looking for best preferences to set up in Premiere Pro. Feel free to like and subscribe to the channel if you like these types of tutorials. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.